Hey everybody, this is Rustin with Metalholic, and with us today, Dave Lombardo of Film, and of course, Slayer. How you doing, man? Good, man. I'm doing really good. What's happening? Well, obviously, we're here to talk about uh, your new project next week. Debut album from Film, Harmonic, nice play on words there, <laughs> will be released. First off, i got to ask, with Slayer <laughs> being a non-stop touring machine since World Painted Blood came out, when did you find time for Film? Well, I mean, really, you have to check the website. You'll see how much we tour. And there's a lot of free time. Um, so, I mean, it's not like we're, we're out there every day of the year, 365 days a year. I think last year we only did 60 shows. Really? It seems like you guys are constantly on tour. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, well you... we come around, and we come around every year, you know, but it, it only takes to go around the States once. You know, it's only like, what, 30, you know, 40 days out of my life and there's a lot of time there is a lot of time to do a lot of other things well that's a great and thing that's how I, I do it there's 24 hours in a day I only need 6 hours sleep fuck what else am I going to do you know when <laughs> when music is, is, is your life and you enjoy it it's uh, you enjoy what you do you always find time for it and you create Absolutely. Now, film is certainly an eclectic project, a world away in most respects from your day job. Can you give us the backstory on how you guys sort of came together and, and how this project took form? Well, you know, um, I met Jerry through a mutual friend, and um, we, we hit it off. Uh, we talked about music that we were into at that time. This was back in 96. And, um, you know, we talked about different music. And when I heard him play, you know, because I, I like to jam with other musicians. In other words, I like to sit down and just uh, improvise. Right. And just hang out and, you know, make noise. Hey, try something. All right. I, you know, and we start playing off of each other. So I was amazed at his sound and his style. So we pursued on getting some music together and creating a band, you know. And we, so we, we've had this band since 96. The original, when, um, when I was ready to reform this group, because of course I was busy with other projects. I had Phantomus, I was doing Testament, I was with Grip Incorporated, and then Slayer called me. And it just, I couldn't do it. But I found myself with a lot more time now, and um, I called him up in 2008, and I said, "Let's get this uh, this band back together and let's release something," you know. And <clears throat> and we couldn't find the original bass player, so we um, we went ahead and we searched out for bass players, and we couldn't think of who would would be able to fit in this band. So I had done a drum clinic uh, in, in West L.A., California, and and this, uh, this, this bass player shows up because his brother had told him that I was into the band War, which really I was, Tower of Power, War, I mean, all these, you know, funk bands from like the 70s. My brother was into it, and I... I I enjoyed that music a lot, right? you know, and Elvis Presley and all kinds of other stuff that, oh, geez, the, 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 the metal drummer in Slayer, you know, oh, he listens to this? Well, yes. <laughs> and so this stuff, it's like, um, you know, we, then I, I, it was time that I needed to find a, drum, uh, a bass player, and I called Poncho, and it's been great since. And here we are now with the new record, you know, only two years. The band was together only two years. Um, like a year, yeah, a year and a half, something like that. Uh, and, and we put this record out. Right. And, of course, the music's really all that matters, but the inquiring minds out there are going to want to know. Is there a story behind the band name? Not really. Um, I think... You know, because we were tossing around names, uh, you know, back in, you know, 95, 96, whenever it was, and even probably, you know, in the late 90s. Uh, you know, let's say we had one name called Letterbomb, 
and another one, uh, Collect Muzzle. And this one was the one that kind of felt a little, little better. It was kind of jazzy. It's, uh, you know, it's more experimental. It's, it's, it leaves the mind questioning. Right. That's what it does. You know, instead of, you know, any kind of, you know, something that will, you know, uh, um, describe, you know, almost like what the band is, this kind of leaves it vague. You know, which is kind of cool. That's what I wanted. Um, but it turns out that the PHI is the 21st uh, letter in the alphabet, uh, in the Greek alphabet, which makes it, uh, you know, there's all kinds of weird numerology shit going on there. And I don't know. <laughs> um, it's kind of odd. But there is some some strangeness to it. Well, it does. It does really fit the music in a way because there's so much going on sonically on this album that uh, y you really need something that's sort of like vague and has a little mystery to it to fit the music. So, now you you've obviously been in Slayer for a long time, and there's a set songwriting dynamic in this environment. How does the songwriting dynamic work relative to what you've done in the past? Well, it kind of goes along with how. I play music or I play drums. Um, again, it's, I create, you know, on the fly. I could sit there and improvise. And, um, and it's with other musicians, other musicians can do that. And I've always known how to do that. It seems like that's how I taught myself is by, um, hanging out with other musicians and just jamming. Uh, the dynamic is, is absolutely different. We improvise. That's what I was trying to get to uh, when we create music. So we write music collectively. What you are experiencing, what you're hearing at points, because those songs are all written except, let's say, mezzanine, harmonic, and exuberance. Even, har yeah, harmonic was uh, an improvisation that turned out uh, an, like a, like a complete song we could we could create beginnings middles and ends on the fly so um this band will you know create that way whereas you know slayer um uh, is more um uh, like for example carrie will bring me the cd and play games here and learn this uh, or no that that would be jeff carrie would have a bunch of riffs and he'd play them for me and he'd tell me you know I want 4-4 four, four here, you know, I want a regular rock beat here, you know, uh, I want it to go fast here and do something else here, just feel it out, he'll tell me. It'll give me a basic understanding of what, what the song, wh where the song goes. Now, in Slayer, of course, you use this massive drum kit, you're a, you're a metal drummer there and everything, but here you've done something totally different, and I've seen some of the live footage and everything, you've sort of pared back your kit. How did you alter your approach behind the drum kit for film's music? I altered it by removing, of course, the double bass, the double pedal. There's no double pedal. It's all single bass, so it limits me. Um, I'm working within certain parameters, uh, so it's pulling out my creativity in a whole different way. So really, I'm um, just trying to evolve, you know, trying to recreate myself. And it's important, I think, for a musician to, to try different things and always challenge himself. And this is definitely a challenge. And you also produced this album, I believe. And it's it's a very to my ear, a very organic retro vibe to the album. What was it like for you producing and why did you choose to do it? Because I've had this vision for this band since 95. All the early demos, everything we had done from 95, I have these old ADAT tapes. You know, they're these old recording uh, tapes that, they're like a VHS tape and they go in a different kind of a machine that records eight tracks simultaneously. Now, these were really good machines in, in the 90s. Right. And then, of course, you know, with computers and everything, you know, uh, that that went away. Um, so all of the other early demos, all of the, the vision, I was, you know, working on it with Jerry, of course, but I was the one behind the board. Now, you know, here we are, you know, fast forward, we're here in, in 2011 or when we recorded it, you know, and I felt that this was my vision. I know where I want this to go. 
And one of the main things, and a lot of people don't understand, is I wanted it to sound different. I wanted it to sound organic because so many, so many bands are abusing computers to a point where the human element is withdrawn from the music for the sake of perfection. Right. A perfection that they, they cannot deliver live. Deliver what, you know, on record, which you're going to deliver live because you're going to disappoint a lot of people. So that's, that's the direction that I wanted to go. You know, people like say, oh, the sound. Well, I didn't want it to sound pristine and clean. I wanted it to sound how we sounded in a room, you know, in, in, in let's say, in, in your bedroom or your, or your backyard. You know, it wanted to sound raw, what a band really was meant to sound like. I know. Not some, like some kind of playback tape or, you know, some kind of, Electronic. Not. I love electronics. I love industrial electronica music, atmospheric. You know all that stuff. But when a band is playing it, it should be real. When humans are playing it, it should be real. When you're being, you know, promoted as an artist or as a group, and it sounds like a, you know, I call it Pro Tools paralysis. Right. You know, I, I don't find stimulation in their music. It's very uh, monotone. It's very, there's no feeling. It's cold. You know, yeah. so that's where I am. Yeah, well, I guess I, I'm maturing as an, as an artist or <laughs> musician, whatever it is, you know. I think Pro Tools helps in a lot of ways simply for the bands who, you know, we don't have the budgets that we used to have for making records. The industry isn't helping the bands as much as they used to. So it gives them an avenue oh, I believe me, for cutting I love, costs. Believe me, I love Pro Tools. But, I love Pro Tools. That's what we used. That's exactly what we used because we recorded it in a house. We didn't record it in a fancy studio because no company would put up money for us to enter a studio. Right. So, yeah, but I, I agree exactly with what you're saying, though, because you, when you take that human element out and it just all becomes cut and paste and there's no raw energy, there's no organic nature to it, and people can feel that lack of emotion or the emotive sense in the music. So Yeah. Um, yeah. Now... Because you were producing it, I would assume you approach it a little bit differently. How do, how do you approach it as a musician now? Because in the past, it's always been, I'm the musician, this is what I go in and I do. Now I'm producing it. Did it change your train of thought as you approached the music itself as a drummer? No, it was pretty natural because I naturally will go a step ahead. I'm already listening to it in a different way. I already see my options and what direction I could make it sound like, or wow, I really know what to do in this section when it comes to producing it. You know, finding the sound, finding the right reverb or whatever delay, whatever it is that we did, you know, I'm already envisioning ahead. So that being the producer of this record, just I was just able to make that come true. All these ideas and thoughts of the music and what direction I wanted to go to. So it came to fruition. It's like, wow, here it is. I was able to deliver something that was like in my mind, you know, whether it's a small little section where let's say we added a break that I felt at that moment and we were able to capture it. So that's, that's what's cool about it. Now you guys have done some shows and stuff around LA and a few other places. But uh, will you guys find time for a small tour for film, or will it mostly be one-off shows when time permits? Um, when time permits, and I'm hoping to do like a small, maybe a week, two weeks here and there in between uh, Slayer. And you guys, so are let's say Slayer's on tour now for two months. I don't return until August. So August and September, I don't know what's going on. So I could probably book some some shows in that time, well, then and and then when Slayer goes on tour, okay, let's go. I'm ready. You know, so there is time. I'm it, it's not I'm not that busy. I think I can be <laughs> more busy <laughs> than what I am. Yeah. So, well, it's good to look more busy than you actually are. It makes you seem even more impressive than you already are to everybody. So. I know, huh? It's great. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't, uh, you know. 
I shouldn't deny that in interviews or say that, you know, it's not true, that I have plenty of time, because it does. Uh, I guess it is cool. Taking away your Superman image there. So you guys, yeah. are gonna, <laughs> you guys are releasing the album this coming Tuesday, the 15th. The following day, you guys are going to be doing a free webcast. What can fans expect when they tune in? I don't know what to expect. I mean, what, from, from what, the webcast? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, is it just going to be an interview? Are you guys know. performing or? We're performing. Gotcha. We're performing live, yeah. Nice. Um, I don't have a clue what to expect from this. All I know, it's a really nice studio. It's like AOL sessions. I don't know if you've seen that. Yes, absolutely. Like they put you in the studio and you play. Nice. Um, I, I think it's going to be nice. It's just going to show the musicality, uh, the musicianship of, of this band. Because it's you're under the microscope. This is this is going to sound really good, and it's in a studio environment. I'm excited. Yeah. Well, and, and as I said, I mean, I, I really like the album. I love just the entire eclectic vibe of it. I mean, you guys hit on so many elements: jazz, progressive. There's some fusion stuff. There's even some rhythm and blues. I mean, there's just everything on this album, and it's just great to hear. So. And we need more of that. Getting back to that whole late 60s, 70s feel was when music was really, I think, at its most alive. But um, I, I have a story I want to share with you really quickly. I was talking with uh, Vinny Apice a few weeks ago about his new project, Kill Devil Hill. And one of the questions I asked him was about underrated drummers from the best drummers of the last three decades. And he said this young kid, Dave Lombardo, is really impressive. <laughs> so Really? I, yeah. <laughs> so I have to ask you, which makes you feel better, that a drum icon like Vinny has high praise for your skills or that he referred to you as a young kid? You know, Vinny. Vinny. You know, I have to... Dude, that was an amazing. You know, um, that's... Yeah, that that means a lot. That really means a lot. That really means a lot because I, I looked up to Vinny. You know, Carmine, it's like, oh my God. You know, Vanilla Fudge, you know, he was one of the, the, the originals. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, I just recently saw them and I had a great time. That must have prompted this um, this comment. Or, yeah, this comment <laughs> that they said. That is cool. Well, I had to cool. share that with you. So really quickly before we head out of here, you do a little moonlighting with the band we call Slayer. So some thoughts, uh, some quick thoughts on playing Mayhem this year? Yes, I can't wait. We're going to have such a freaking great time. I'm really looking forward to this because Motorhead, great friend of mine. Right. Um, uh, Slipknot, you know, you know, Jim Root. I mean, Corey is great. Um, uh, oh, fuck. Oh, you see, I can't remember the drummer's name. <laughs> Joey Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Can't wait. Should be I an insane wait. tour this year for sure. And Yeah, it, it is. And we understand uh, a pre-tour EP has been planned to sate our appetite, if you will. What can you tell us about yeah, that? Yeah, I don't know anything about that. I don't know anything about that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, fair. I can't. I can't, I can't really talk about Flair, you know. I don't know if I'm going to get the information. I know we've done an EP, but when is it going to come, come in out? I don't know. They're still recording it. Oh. So it's, you know, I, I can't say anything. Awesome. Well, that's okay. Those were my only two Slayer questions anyway. So yeah. last question. I probably that... said too much right there. <laughs> <laughs> last question before we leave then. Tell us one thing about Dave Lombardo that might surprise people. Uh. I'm in my kitchen cooking pancakes and listening to Al Miola, John McLaughlin, and uh, and the other guitar player, uh, that trio. Uh, so I'm listening to some amazing guitar playing while making pancakes in my underwear. How about that? <laughs> There's a visual for you. <laughs> Dave, thanks so much for taking the time. I'll let you get back to cooking. And, uh, we'll talk All right, to you. man. I'll see you when you hit <laughs> yeah, Boise you know, on the Mayhem I'm Tour. I got bedhead, and, you know, I'm just... You know, I'm, I'm going to make myself some pancakes this morning. I haven't had any, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it, man. Take it easy, brother.